Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Andrea. My name is Jennapriya. And if you haven't already, go check out our first video where we explain what this channel is all about. And with that, let's get started with Unit 1, Research Methods. So in order to introduce this first preliminary topic in IV psychology, we're going to be looking at research methods. So if you're wondering why we're starting with research methods as our first unit, it's basically because everything we learn in psychology is based on empirical evidence and empirical evidence is obtained through research methods. So all the research methods we're going to be um, learning about in this unit will encompass two broad categories. So it'll be either quantitative or qualitative research. And there are four main concepts that are going to be applied to both. So these main four concepts are sampling, credibility, generalizability, and bias. And these are very vital in determining the applicability of uh, research findings. And we will also discuss the application of these methods in specific types of research. And last but not least, we will discuss ethical principles in psychology and we will look at certain psycholo psychological studies that have defied these principles um, and why those um, studies are ethically and morally wrong. So the topics in this unit would be research in psychology, both quantitative and qualitative, and also ethics in psychological research. So first lesson, introduction, research in psychology. So what is psychology? The book definition for psychology is that it is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. The word psychology comes from the Greek words psych and logos, which means soul and study. So the study of the soul. So for the first part of the definition, psychology is the scientific study. So psychology, psychological studies should be supported and based on empirical evidence. It, but it also needs to be proven false. There should be multiple attempts in order to create a larger database in order to support the concept being studied. The second part of the definition is the study of behavior and mental processes. Behavior is anything that is observable, such as facial expressions and verbal responses. Mental processes are the ones that are behind the scenes of these actions, which are the internal, internal patterns. So for example, in a movie, the behavior would be the finished product, what we see on the screen. Mental processes are all those crew that work behind what we see in the screen. So one study that's talked about in this lesson is the study of Clever Hans, a horse owned and trained by Wilhelm von Austin to supposedly know how to solve simple math problems. Another psychologist, Oscar Funks, gathered data that suggested otherwise. Because of his study, many questioned Hans' true abilities. It was then later discovered that the horse was not really solving the problems, but rather reading the questioner's posture and facial expressions. Evolutionarily, this makes sense because reading others are an essential survival skill for animals. Artifacts. Artifacts are results that are associated with the effects of unforeseen factors. Confounding variables can lead to artifacts. In the clever hand study, the confounding variable in the initial investigation would be the questioner's posture and facial expression, because this was not taken into account when studying Hans. And this led to them thinking that Hans was actually solving the problems, but rather it was actually a result of the questioner's posture and facial expression. So let's get on to actual research methodology. 
So as mentioned before, all research methods can be categorized into qualitative or quantitative research. So let's just go through an overview of each type and just basic information on each. In terms of the type of data obtained in, in each of the researches, quantitative research is numerical while qualitative is textual. So for example, quantitative research would involve numbers and statistics and things like that. While qualitative research would involve interview transcripts, paragraphs of interpretations and related information. And the approaches are also different as quantitative takes a nomothetic approach while ideographic is qualitative's approach. And these two studies vary very greatly in terms of objectivity, while quantitative is very objective and is prone to very little bias compared to qualitative research that is much more subjective and prone to biases in terms of researcher interpretation. And lastly, the aim of each type of study is very different. Quantitative research aims to find universal ideas and generalize to a population where findings are meant to be um, applicable to many people, while qualitative research is based on interpretation and in-depth information, which seeks to find novel information that may not be applicable to everyone. So in order to gain a further understanding of each, let's get started with quantitative research. So quantitative research uses variables, and we can think of this as something that can be anything. And these variables must be operationalized into a way that we can actually measure them or into a quantifiable format. So in order to understand what operationalization is and why we need it, let us find out what constructs are. Constructs are any theoretically defined variable. They can't be observed because we literally construct them. So things like aggression and memory and love, these are all constructs. We can't really observe them, but we know they exist because we have constructed them as humans. We have made them into a subject. But in order to study these, we have to measure them or else how can we get, gather our data in quantitative research? We have to quantify them in order to gain our numerical data. So in order to do that, we need to um, operationalize them. So when we operationalize constructs, we need to make it quantifiable. We need to express them in terms of observation. We need to find a way to observe and quantify them. So for an example, an operationalization or a way to measure anxiety would be to measure the amount of cortisol in the bloodstream. This can be easily quantified into a number which is perfect for quantitative research. And keep in mind that there are many, many ways to operationalize one variable. For example, memory can be operationalized in terms of the number of words memorized after reading a passage, or the um, length of an essay written after someone looks at an image with descriptions of that image. Like there could be many ways to find out your memory. For example, taking a reading quiz after reading your psychology textbook, how many questions you get right, things like that. So there are many, many ways to operationalize a construct. So if you're doing your own research study, make sure to be creative and find different ways because that's how we find different psychological findings. You never know. <laughs> so um, the specific methods under quantitative research are three different types. There are experimental studies, correlational studies, and descriptive studies. And we will go further in depth in future videos. Now on to qualitative research. As mentioned before, the main focus of this is for in-depth study. We are trying to find novel information that may be different from person to person. We wanna go beyond operationalizing variables and we want to go into some interpretations, subjective material, meaning that the human behavior is very in-depth and um, varied among populations. So we just want to find the meaning behind that and interpret certain behaviors. So the different methods that um, are included under qualitative research include observations such as naturalistic observations where we look at humans or animals in their environment, which is natural. And we also have interviews. We have focus groups, which are like group interviews, case studies, which focus few, one or few people and look at them in depth and study them really well. And we also have content analysis, which is just taking different psychological studies and analyzing them with, um, that are pre-existing. 
And the last thing we need to talk about in terms of research methods are the four main concepts that encompass all research methodology, which need to be taken into account. So sampling is basically the process of finding your participants for your study. So a sample is basically the group of individuals participating in your study, and sampling is a process of obtaining them. Credibility can basically be linked with trustworthiness, which is closely linked to bias. So how much can I trust your results in your psychological study? And generalizability is closely linked to sampling, meaning that a good generalizability means um, your sample effectively represents your population that you're trying to study. Because a population is the broad group of people that you're trying to study by obtaining a representative sample of that population. So basically generalizability is how applicable are your results to your greater population. And last but not least, this is our um, master chart, which is also in your course companion textbook. We just have typed it up for you. Um, this is everything we're going to be covering in unit one. And this is perfect if you want to study really quick for your exam. It's just everything is on there for you. Um, thank you guys so much. OK, um, see you next lesson where we go more in depth into experiments. Thank you, guys. <laughs>